Hello Rutbags, it's Jade, welcome to a grounded guide today. With the PTS server again, things may change, but I'm taking a look at the oven and the brand new cookbook recipes. Basically, whenever you pick up a burgle chip now, most of them have some oven recipes that you can make meals with. Now these meals are gonna last a lot longer, they're also gonna give you a buff, and they're different a little bit from the super smoothies, but they work much stronger, but shorter meals are meant to just keep you fuller for longer. Every single one of them comes with the well-fed and meal bonus, and then they all have additional bonuses like swim speed, critical hit chance, or helping you with full damage. So I'm gonna cover all of that and how you unlock them all. Do leave a like, make sure you go and check out the rest of my grounded guides, tutorials, news, and let's go. So to make these meals, you also need to use them in the oven. So you need to unlock the oven. That's a whole host of things you need to do. But since the update's been out for a few months with that, I don't think I need to really cover it. Once you've got a chip, you take it back to Burgle and he'll give you the option to buy one of the cookbooks for the recipes you've just unlocked. The chip you find next to Burgle, the Grasslands chip, is actually called the Oak Tree Chip when you give it to him. And all of the chips cost 3,500 points to unlock. So you'll end up having some of the recipes for this pretty early, way before you maybe unlock the actual oven. You get Nachos level 1, Mac and Bees level 2, and they're both going to help you with full defence. Basically, you won't take as much damage when you drop from a height. So somewhat confusingly, if you want the Sandbox cookbook, well, you're going to have to actually unlock it by getting the chip from the Black Ant Hill. I really think they should just maybe make it the name bit change. It will give you access to the Omulant as well as the Quasidolantiolion. Oh, I cannot say it save my life. Which both give you Fawn's damage on weapons. The Omulant's tier 1, but the Quasilda, that is tier 3. And it's going to give you Sizzle protection as well. So again, it's going to keep you nice and cool when exploring the sandbox. I guess it's to prepare you to then go and explore the sandbox because you can get to the sandbox via a secret tunnel in the Black Ant Hills. And to top off the confusion, right now on the PTS server, it's actually called the Red Ant Hill chip, just like the other Red Ant Hill chip that you can find in the west of the map. So yeah, expect maybe some changes or variations with that come the full update because it is just a bit wee bit confusing. Otherwise, yeah, that's how you unlock the sandbox stuff. So the Haze Burgle chip is going to unlock Mite Loaf and Fungus Spatio. You can see the Mite Loaf's tier 1, the Fungus Spatio is tier 2. And they both have the Attack Stamina buff as well as the Well Fed and the Meal. I'm not going to rattle off the ingredients to make some of these because it is the PTS and in the past they have changed some stuff during the time. So once we get a full complete picture I'll do a proper full guide on all the foods, smoothies and everything in one go. The Hedge Cookbook is going to unlock the Spider Slider and Lavagna. Spider sliders tier 2, you can see 4 spider chunks and yeah, it does mean that all tier 2 items are going to be longer, with both giving extra critical hit chance. The pond is probably one of the least appetising, I guess, if you want to call it that, because it costs 3,500 science points, but all you get is the boatman fin soup. So not exactly, yeah, the world's most useful thing. I've inserted a few clips, just giving you a hint of where they are. But like I said, some of these I've been around for ages now, so you should know where these chips are located. But I will be doing fresh guides very soon. So yeah, I'm fully expecting another tier 3 meal to come in. There may be even more, maybe there's going to be more than 10 recipes. I think kind of it would be cool if every single burgle chip had a recipe attached to it. A quick note about food as well. I've seen quite a bit of discourse with people complaining that it's hard to get food in the early days now. Man, there is so much food when you start running around. They've got the rotten food now, which is in abundance, which you can use as fertilizer. And in general, as long as you're actually looking and not just running around trying to capture meat, you will find a plethora of food chunks, cookie chunks and all sorts. So you are meant to get to this stage a bit quicker. Some of these foods, the level tier one ones, they're not that hard to make. They do require maybe just some basic ingredients, some creatures and some basic ingredients you can find. And it's only the tier two and tier three that are going to acquire some of them shards to really get some better quality additions in terms of effects what you're going to be doing when you couple that with the effects of your weapons now as well you could make some seriously op builds if you've got the right food add to that the shakes that we've always had as well and you get the idea that they really want you to build these only thing they've got to do now is provide us with a fridge like i said either increase the time that these meals last or give us the means that we can keep them cooler. Maybe like a little ice cube box or something. I don't know. But some way that we can keep these cool. On the roadmap it does say that they may possibly have powered stuff in the future. So maybe that's when we would see something like a fridge freezer. 
I crafted at least three of every kind of meal and I pretty much went and ate them all because I'm a big fat heifer. And it looks like normal foods that you're going to make from now on might only actually last for about eight minutes and you're only going to get half of the health regenerated that you normally would. Now, if you get a tier one meal, so the ones that I've been showing you in these cookbooks, that's going to give you 12 minutes duration and you're going to get a normal amount of passive regeneration of your health and then you also get the meal effects the extra ones that we've been going over like the full damage negation then tier two is going to be 16 minutes and it's 1.5 times regenerating your health and it's still got just that one effect but tier three jumps up and it's got three effects and it's going to be a 20 minute duration and obviously it's going to double the amount of health that you regen and each tier, that extra effect, whether it's fawns or critical hit chance or swim speed, if it's a tier two item, you get that extra amount of time for that special effect as well. You can see the Quasildas give me that sizzle protection that gave me like, yeah, a big amount. So that was more bigger than uh, any of the rest and it's still going on. Whereas if you eat a second meal, it can actually knock off the effects from the first meal. So obviously they don't accumulate and stack. You're not going to get a bonus for having three meals in one go. And I guess the last thing to note is that because these meals don't stack, it's starting to get tight with the inventory again. It was a big, massive help when they added the armor slots not to be taken up in the inventory. But now we've got to carry extra foods. Now you're going to have extra weapons. Something's got to happen in the next update that we get backpacks or pouches or some way to expand the inventory a little bit or stack some of these items. Especially since you now need molar upgrades to increase how much stack sizes you can carry too. And although it looks like science points are going to be a bit easier to get hold of, I still think that is definitely a case of me showing you guys in the future what ones you should be really concentrating on first in terms of making the foods and whether or not it's worth the time and worth the science points to unlock. But as I said, this is only a taster. I'm making all the food puns today. Uh, we have got obviously the big major update actually hitting everyone. And I wanted to wait until then because I reckon some of these values may still change before then. Let me know what you think about the food system, the changes and the meals. As always, best guides, tutorials, news and opinion about survival games. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you for more Grounded soon.